We've made it through round one, pretty miraculously, I think, and we're here for round two. This will be interesting to see if we actually make the finals. This is a tough deck to do it. Whew. Well, uh, we're certainly not getting easy game ones if this is what's happening. This is good. I can accept this hand, though. This is looking pretty nice. Uh, ooh, do I want Obliterator? Obliterator is really strong, but I really need the land, so I think I have to bottom it. As awkward as that is, because I think Obliterator is one of the strongest cards in our deck. I hate having to bottom it, but there's no real way that I can justify keeping it on top with no way to play it. We could still be in a lot of trouble here if I don't draw an actual land. But I, it had to be a keep. It was a good... Best hand that we were going to get. Okay. So we did draw. Works out okay. Uh, I don't want to play Liliana yet because I don't want to discard cards. So I'll just play Ophiomancer. I'd rather use Liliana to kill off an opponent's creature here, hopefully. Or if I can get like a spare land or something else that I don't care about going to the graveyard. Then it's more reasonable. But it doesn't make sense to play Liliana right now and just plus it. Our opponent has a bunch more cards in hand. They're going to just be able to discard like a random land they don't care about. We have to discard something that we probably do. Probably care about, that is. Hmm. So we've got Skin Render, which is pretty awkward. Did our opponent bottom or top those cards? I didn't actually look. It's important to know. Put a card on the bottom, bottom. Both on bottom. Skin Render can't come into play here, which is, this is the problem with it versus like Shriekmar or Necrotal. They have to have a creature for Skin Render to actually come out. Or I have to kill something that I don't care about. I suppose I could just shoot down the snake. That might be the best thing to do. Yeah, I'm actually going to do that. I still have ultimate price. I think it makes sense. I get back a snake on their upkeep. And Liliana's just not doing all that much currently. We're open now to a Day of Judgment or something similar, so I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Metamorph. Skin Render, kill the Ophiomancer. Yep. I do get to make them sacrifice it with Liliana, so that's still okay. It's not great, but it'll help. I can hold up ultimate price. And Makeshift Mannequin can get back the Ophiomancer at some point. Not the best situation, but it'll work. we got to keep pressure up on our opponent here. We're definitely the aggro list compared to them. Their deck seems a lot more controlling. If they're three colors and blue, then it seems pretty likely. Line first strike lifelink. Oh. Also dead. Can plus and discard the land. That seems okay. Opponent also discarding a land. Forbid. Ooh. Yikes. I'm gonna hold up the mannequin. It's certainly possible that our opponent can have something like Day of Judgment. And makeshift mannequin back of Theomancer is not even that great right now. We already have a snake, so it's really just a 2-2. Two -two. I might want to makeshift mannequin back the Gazella. It, oh no, it's... Okay, it's from our graveyard. For some reason, I thought this was from any graveyard. Like, wait a minute, I could just get Gazella, but that's actually not the case. Hmm, Skin Render versus Kitchen Finks. I wish that I had the Skin Render in my graveyard currently. Um, I think I want to use the mana. Because otherwise I'm just going to have to discard it to Liliana anyways. Which is awkward, but... I guess we'll accept this. Negate, sure. Slaughter Pact. Hmm. I could use Liliana and Slaughter Pack, the Kitchen Fings. Tack in for another four, leave our opponent at nine because they'll gain two life. I have to lose the Liliana to do it.
I guess we just slaughter pack attack and then plus Liliana. I don't really want to lose the Lily right now. Kitchen Finks can attack Liliana, but then it's not defending. We're dealing a bunch of damage to our opponent. They can trade for the Snake here. That's acceptable to me. Because then it's not attacking a Liliana. And there's less things for them to have so that we can make them sacrifice something better, possibly. Opponent discarded Snapcaster Mage. They have some good cards in hand if they're discarding things like Snapcaster Mage and Forbid. Could be very scary. Coming in at Liliana. Liliana goes to one. Hmm. An opponent does nothing. That's very interesting. Attack for three. And leave back the snake to block the Kitchen Finks. No play from the opponent. All right. Restoration Angel. Ew. Yep. That is really good. The good news is that we're both just in top deck mode. Opponent loses Yose. So we lose the Liliana, and our opponent has a better board. But they're at much lower life total, so it's all just about who draws better now. Hmm. Click. Ugh. Well, that's... Indicative of how much better they're drawing. Yikes. That's a problem. Guess we're just passing the turn. I don't really want to throw Skin Render into Kitchen Finks here. Nor do I want to throw the snake. Sorry, I have a cat here. You may be hearing him in the background. Taking six in the air. Ugh. Attrition. That's a thing. It doesn't do that much for us right now, but I guess we'll play it. There's no reason to hold on to it. I want to get it down now and then hopefully find a way to get back like a Pheomancer and use it. Opponent's not playing lands, so either they're holding them in hand to make me worried, or they've got some good cards they just got. Locks it on Warhammer onto Skin Render or onto the Snake. Both of those seem pretty decent. I'll play the Locks it on, play the land, have the mana to use Attrition. Opponent can trade Kitchen Finks for the Snake. But that's pretty acceptable to me. It means that afterwards this skin render can't really be blocked by the 2-1 that they get. So our opponent has to draw something fairly decent. Well, they're looking at paying costs. They're going to attack first. And then hopefully not something like Sun Titan, but probably something like Sun Titan. This is a close game. It was good. Came down to just a couple little draws. Yeah, I drew a couple lands at the end, and I mulliganed to six at the start. Our opponent drew Treachery and Vendillion Click and kind of wrecked us at the end. It was pretty close, though. It wasn't that bad. I could have used... Uh, the attrition to sacrifice it, which was obviously stupid. I don't know why I pressed F6 there, I think. But it didn't really give me a chance to respond. I, I must have pressed F6 for some reason. We were dead anyways. Anything that would take this or kill it, I think we were just dead. I should have definitely used attrition and killed the Restoration Angel. It would leave me at 1. 
Arena wouldn't do anything, though. We were still dead. So our opponent has more creatures than I would normally expect from, like, a blue-white-red deck. But I think that that's very common in this cube. This cube is a lot more about creature interactions than most cubes. So that's interesting. I think that makes Mono Black a little bit stronger because I've talked about how it's pretty good against other creature decks. I don't really have any good changes to make, though. Liliana is not where I want to be. Aberrant Overlord, same kind of thing. It's just too slow. I want to be able to undercurve my opponent here, I think. Una's Prowler becomes interesting for that because it does lead to some fairly fast starts. But I don't really love it, and I don't think it's necessary. We'll just send back the same list. The, the problem with the Una's Prowler is that it's easy for them to discard random cards and get you just not really mad, like care about uh... if they have cards they don't really care about then they can throw them away and get some value off of it you have a hard time attacking into like a flyer on their side because you never know if it's actually going to be able to trade or not same with blocks it's always just a problem so they have to have like no creatures in play for Uno's Prowler to really do work this is acceptable. Not amazing, but if we can draw another land, then we're okay. If we can curve Asylum Visitor into a Rager into Obliterator, then we're more than okay. And I'm thinking Asylum Visitor could deal a lot of damage here. Declaration in Stone. All right. I'm going to try and draw land. Whew, good. That was scary. I don't want to miss any land drops here. Wouldn't be that upset if our opponent just plays a creature. Okay, no Vendillion click. Worried about a uh, counter spell right now. I don't think I want to play Obliterator. Not into this kind of mana. We know that our opponent has Forbid. At least Forbid. And Negate. Negate doesn't stop Obliterator, but it's still a concern to... Like, it shows that they have the counter spells. Two mana. They could have Remove Soul, but I haven't seen it. So now might be the time for us to just jam with this Obliterator. I could also use Sedissi and sacrifice the Phyrexian Rager to get a Demonic Tutor effect. I kind of like that. All right, so what are we going to grab? That's the question. Now what do I do with it? I could grab... Hmm. I was thinking Batter Skull. Mindbender actually looks really good. Mindbender could be insane. We still have Ever After. So if I sacrifice Sedissi, and I draw land, then I can actually Ever After... And get a huge amount of value off of that. So maybe Mindbender is the way to go. We know that our opponent's going to have some good cards for us to take. And they can't really counter the trigger from the Mindbender. I'll take Mindbender. I can play Arena and Mindbender next turn. As long as Sidisi lives. Yose. That's good. So, tap to five permanents. Hmm. So, do I want a mind bender right now, or do I want to gatekeeper arena? Obviously in the other order, because of what, if I Gatekeeper first, then Yose taps down my other untapped land, and I can't actually play Arena. Hmm. It's a tough one. I think we go Arena and Gatekeeper. It's a tough choice. 
I just like the way that this uses our mana a little bit better. And getting Arena down is pretty important against this person. We're going to get a lot of value out of it. They don't have a ton of pressure on us, and Arena is just going to give us a ton of value. They have to find a pretty good answer for it. I can still play Distended Mindbender next turn, because they tapped Sadissi. Oh, no, 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 I don't untap. Right, right, right. I was thinking that, uh, I always forget the way that Yosei works. I think that it, like, locks just the five that it targets down, but that's not the case. It makes it so that we don't untap at all. So we're going to skip our next turn. Yosei's good, but I don't have any other better way to deal with it, unfortunately. So they're going to use Sadissi. No, Kitchen of Pinks. I was expecting them to use Sadissi and sacrifice Kitchen Finks to get a, huh, get a trigger of Sadissi. Seems like it would have been pretty good. Okay, we'll play our land just in case we draw another one next turn. I don't think that we throw Gatekeeper under the bus yet. Frost Titan, you. It's a problem. Tap the Gatekeeper. Sure. It's a little strange, because it means that Sadissi is untapped next turn. They can attack into it and tap it then. I also attack with it, though. If I play Distended Mindbender for 5 off of Gatekeeper... Then I still have three mana left. So I could victimize. That doesn't make any sense. Hmm. This Frost Titan is a big issue. Might have wanted to use the Mindbender. I can play Obliterator. I can play Obliterator and Mindbender, but only if I sacrifice Sidisi. That might make sense, because I can ever after later. How much damage do we take next turn? We can jump with either Obliterator or the Mindbender and take six. Ugh. I'm assuming that my opponent doesn't have anything in their hand after we use the Distended Mindbender, like nothing that changes this. So I guess that's what we do. And then we take one from our arena. It's going to be tough. So we'll attack with Sidisi first. If the opponent blocks, then I'm the happiest person in the universe. I can't imagine a universe in where that which that happens. Just seems terrible. Negate Restoration Angel Fire Ice. Fire Ice probably just kills us. I think that I have to take it. As much as I don't like taking the negate. Uh, Fire Ice is... Like, the two damage is a real problem. Alright, so Fire Ice and Resto... I can now ever after back Sidisi and Rager. Puma has Negate. So now's a good time to start playing something like that. I can sacrifice the Gatekeeper of Malakir to get something off the top of my deck. Alright, so what am I going to get here? I need a way to kill Frost Titan. Attrition does it. So does Slaughter Pact, Obnixilis. Ultimate Price. 
what's the best way for us to do it next turn? So our opponent attacks with everything. Taps down Sidisi. I double block the Frost Titan. Take six. Opponent still has in hand the negate. So negate's the issue. I don't really want to grab something that is a non-creature in that way then. Which makes this tougher. Hmm. Because Guiltleaf Winnower doesn't do it. Skin Render makes it smaller, but that's not great. Theomancer, the snake just gets tapped. There's not a great answer here. If I have nine mana next turn, Obnixilis and Obliterator work together. Although, I need to spend two mana to actually target the Frost Titan. Ugh, this is tough. It might just be ultimate price then, because then that's five with the Obliterator. I'll have to look for a window to actually get it through. Slaughter Pact is similar. Just costs two mana. So I can actually play Shieldred in Slaughter Pact. Alright, I'm going to take Slaughter Pact. Actually, no, I can't Slaughter Pact right now or it gets countered. Duh. I was like, I could Slaughter Pact currently, but if I do that, that's going to make me feel really silly. It's good to play around the gate, but unfortunately it doesn't play around Frost Titan's own ability. Well, opponent's trying to play costs immediately. That's no good. They, like, immediately went to doing that. Oh, what a top deck. That's super gross. Let's them keep enough mana up for negate, and it lets them kill one of our best things, like Sidisi. So now the Rager has to chump block the Frost Titan. Hmm. Yep. Blech, vomit. Yeah, couldn't have had a better top deck there from our opponent. I think that means we're dead. I can Guilt Leaf Winnower, kill a Kitchen Finks, but that doesn't do enough. Winnower plus Obliterator. Like, we're just dead to this other kitchen things and i mean this comes back too hmm frost titan is a very strong card and that was a really good top deck this is the best removal spell it's so so strong it gets around hex proof it's just cheap and efficient it's just nasty really good top deck from our opponent there and we can't get this slaughter packed off because of the negate yeah, I don't see a way out of this. Not unless our opponent made a huge mistake and somehow lets us... If they somehow let us Slaughter Pact. Even then, we get Shieldred down, make them sacrifice Kitchen Finks. I mean, I, I guess that that's what we have to do. That's our only real out. Because Guilt Leaf Winnower doesn't do it. Kills the Sphinx. It kills the Finks. We play Obliterator. Opponent taps. And we still just die. Because we have to chump Titan, but we take five from the other ones. Yeah, there's nothing better to do. Problem here is that this ability goes on the stack, so our opponent's going to know to negate it. I can't really catch them in an F6 because of the Frost Titan trigger. Which is the worst thing. Because I, like, I would have had a chance to be able to do it if I think that my opponent even f 6 there. But it doesn't matter because the Frost Titan trigger goes on the stack, and then they have a chance to just kind of... F3 and respond. They could have, maybe not F6, sorry, F4. So if they're passing until the next time that I actually do anything, then it'll just let them respond and they're in fine shape. 
So not too much that I could do about that. It doesn't let you do anything tricky like you can in real life or in normal games when you have the normal Magic Online games when you have a trigger like that because it'll just go on the stack and warn your opponent that something's happening. Yeah, I mean, I don't see any other way out either. It's not like we could have done something different. No matter whatever line we took, we were still just dead there. Victimize doesn't get us anything back because we they come back tapped, so it's not enough. It was a good try. We just needed our opponent not to have something that was removal and cheap enough that they could hold up the negate. Because if they did, if they had removal, but it wasn't cheap enough to hold up negate, then we still had the slaughter pack. And we still could have done it. Uh, if they didn't draw removal, then we'd be able to play enough creatures and just not worry about the slaughter pack yet. But yeah, negate plus the councils was just too much. Really good draw. It was a close game. We did decently considering our deck. I think that this deck was a very mediocre version of black. It was acceptable, but certainly not where I wanted to be. Not willing Garolf's Messenger was a huge problem sign. That, that said immediately that we were going to be in some trouble with this. But this gives you a decent idea of what a mono black deck looks like and a little bit about the newer Legacy Cube. I hope that you guys stick around and check the article out as well at newmockgaming.com. And if you ever want to vote for our next Full Force episode, which will be coming out around Kaladesh. Right. No land still. Hopefully this take inventory will get us something. And come on, mountain. Whew. There we go. Just barely. I'll play another one, too. And I guess that I'm willing to trade this Ingenious Scob for a Paranoid Parish Blade. Ugh. Not excited about it. But I have to protect my life total. I've got so many extra cards up on my opponent now that it makes sense to go for the long game.